It's Melissa from the Top Drawer RVA. It's Wednesday at 3 and this is my time to get on here on the Dixie Bell paint page and show you a little bit about what we're going to paint today. So I'm glad you can join me. When you do hop on, I would love it if you would, you know, comment below. Let me know where you're watching from. Let me know that everything is clear and in focus. You can hear me and see me. I would be glad to hear from you. And if I don't answer any of your comments, during this live video, I am always happy to go back through in the comments and answer them afterwards. I'll, I'll scooch through there and make sure I don't miss any of those important questions. All right. So great. Welcome. Welcome to uh, hanging out and painting with me on Wednesdays. I'm sitting on my floor as per usual. And this is my newest project. And I thought I would bring you along for this little painting journey. So welcome. Hello. Hello. Hi, Judith. I see Dixie Bell on there with me. Let's jump in. All right, let's jump in and, and talk a little bit about what we're going to do today. So I have this sweet little jewelry armoire. The sides open up and it's velvet lined. I decided that I miss the beach. I miss the beach. So I am going to be doing a beach inspired painting today. I hope that um, you will give it a go once you see how easy it is and how quickly we can achieve a beautiful kind of ombre beachy finish. Okay. So to begin with, this little piece has been cleaned with white lightning. White lightning is a powder based cleaning formula that I disperse into a recycled spray bottle. I clean this entire piece with white lightning and then I rinsed it with water and wiped it down. So it's good to go. We are ready to start painting today. A couple little things about this little armoire. This is a velvet lined jewelry box, which means that this hardware doesn't come off. Okay, I am stuck with painting this hardware well, I paint the piece. So I thought today what will happen is I will tell you the colors that we're going to be using and then you can help me pick my accent color today because I'm going to have to come back in afterwards and paint this hardware by hand really, really, <laughs> really fine tuning the details. So let me tell you the colors we're painting today and after I tell you, you can tell me what you think I should do. All right, let's begin. So the base of this project, because we're doing an ombre blend, of course it's oceany and beachy, we have to have blue. My favorite go-to blue, kind of to start all of my projects at the base, is In the Navy. In the Navy is so rich and so deep, and it is really good for mixing with other colors to kind of give it a, a good base to pull up from, okay? From In the Navy, we are going to go to, and don't be shocked at my bold color choice, Y'all know I love some bold color. We're going to move into Peacock today, if I can open it. It's a brand new can. So Peacock is this gorgeous, gorgeous blue, super vibrant, very, very, very pretty. It's going to be blended into the In the Navy, okay? So we're going to move from In the Navy into Peacock. Peacock is then going to go into Sea Glass. And don't judge me for my fancy, fancy container. It is what it is. <laughs> I poured it in here because the other bottle wasn't closing properly for me anymore. So sea glass is actually a really pretty, beautiful green. I'm going to give it a shake and we're going to mix that into our peacock, okay? And then to top it all off, on the top of this piece, we're going to make sand. We're going to do burlap. Burlap is a really pretty kind of a neutral beigey color. And then this way we can make a ombre ocean effect. So in the navy, peacock, sea glass, burlap, all right? You ready? Let's get started. I'm going to put my glasses on so I don't miss any comments. All right, so here we go. I'm going to start painting and after you see the color that we, we start off with and move into, I want you to tell me if you think I should paint the hardware in what color of Moonshine Metallic. Okay, I have three here. I have beautiful Moonshine Metallic in Steel Magnolia. I have Moonshine Metallic in Gold Digger and I have Moonshine Metallic in Silver Bullet. These are all gorgeous metallic tones. I really, really like these colors together, but on this piece, I'm going to pick one. So I'm either going to go cool and silver or warm and gold. So once we get started and you see how it's kind of coming together, I want you to kind of give me the vote on what moonshine metallic I should use to paint these tiny little handles because they don't come off. All right, let's get started. Sit on the floor and play with some paint. So I'm going to paint with the drawers in and the sides closed. After I'm finished, I'll come back in and do the detailing on the inside. But for continuity sake, when I do an ombre blend, I like to keep my drawers in and my sides closed. It just helps, 
helps kind of lay down your base colors and get everything where it needs to go. You can fine tune the inside later. All right, let's begin. Hi, Erin, how are you? We're gonna use In the Navy, and I have my flat medium brush that's being dampened with my spray misting ball. When I do an ombre blend, I don't get crazy with being definite, precise, and even. I'm gonna put this paint on, we're gonna cover the wood, and I'm gonna lay my color pattern out. I always find that using this initial plan of laying down your base colors helps you kind of guide your vision for your ombre blend, okay? Because it's gonna change. It's gonna change when you move your colors around and it's gonna change when you start mixing your paint together. So by just kind of laying it down and getting your initial coat started, you're able to really kind of tell where you want them to live, all right? We're putting the colors down where we want them to live. So in the navy is great because it's so deeply pigmented. I love in the navy because of its darkness, because it's deep and it's such a highly pigmented color that it doesn't take a lot of paint. In the navy is one of those colors that kind of lets you get away with almost one coat. Not quite, it usually takes two, but you're almost at one coat. <laughs> so I'm gonna come down here and just start it at the base. We're gonna paint these little legs and I always like to kind of drag my dark colors up a little bit higher than, um, than where it's going to live. So who wants to put bets on the fact that I'm probably going to knock this over? Are we taking money bets right now to see? Are you still watching Aaron? Put me down for, for 10 bucks within this live that this thing tips over. <laughs> because it's going to happen. Accidents always happen when I'm painting live. Always, always. It is what it is. Okay, so I'm just laying this in the navy down, kind of bringing it up a little bit higher on the edges and getting it here. I'm not gonna have a ton of in the navy um, because it's just my, my base. I always like the base of my projects to be a lot darker than, um, than the rest. Ooh, I moved it and nothing fell. What do you think? All right, so we've got that beautiful kind of starting base of in the navy and I'm going to open up my beautiful beautiful peacock okay I'm keeping separate brushes for each color that I'm using today by keeping separate brushes you're not contaminating your colors and you're able to kind of put them down without blending them together if that makes sense your initial colors are not blended they're just Put down in the pattern where they're going to live. So you love doing jewelry armors? Me too. I love, I love tiny things. I'd much rather paint a tiny thing than a big giant thing. Do you see that gorgeous piece behind me? Don't worry, I'm going to teach you how to do that one day soon. <laughs> this piece I painted in my pajamas all weekend. It's a gorgeous old, old kind of old world finish and I had about 11 billion people asking me for a tutorial and I didn't do one. So I figured I'll come on here within the very soon future and teach you guys how to do that if you would like. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna put my glasses there and we're gonna move on to Peacock. Again, not blending our colors and again, painting over this hardware, which is uh, my least favorite thing to do, but they're not coming off. So work with what you got, right? Work with what you got. So I'm gonna lift up this hardware and paint right over top of it. Any ideas yet of what you think I should do hardware wise? Are you thinking steel magnolia? Are you thinking I should go silver bullet? Should I go with my old standby and stick with gold digger? You guys are voting, you're letting me know. I'm gonna let you guys choose the most common that I see telling me what color you think the hardware should be. That's how we're gonna do this today. I'm asking the people. <laughs> So when little harbors like this don't come off, don't be scared, just paint over them. By painting over them, you're giving them kind of a good base. You're getting in all the little nooks and crannies and you're able to then gently paint on with a tiny brush. I just use like a little craft brush and I paint on my metallics over top and they become an accent part of the piece. The fact that you can see a tiny bit of color in there is okay. 
you can just kind of work with the piece that you have and know that this is the look that you're kind of wanting to achieve. Don't look at it as a negative, look at it as a positive and work with what you have. All right, so this gorgeous peacock is coming onto this piece. Remember, I'm not ombre blending my colors yet. I'm just laying them down. And we're going beachy today. This is going to be super beachy, super cute, and super fun. And yes, I will remove all of my drawers later on um, and make sure that all my edges are touched up proper. But that stuff is boring. You don't want to see that boring stuff. You want to see me paint and have fun and learn something, right? That's why I'm here. <laughs> Go ahead and ask all the questions. I love it. I am more than willing to answer all of the questions and uh, help you if I can. And if I can't, I know that Dixie Bell can help me or one of those other amazing brand ambassadors are full of knowledge. Somebody up there has the answer and I'll find it for you. So don't be afraid of asking questions. That's part of learning. And that's part of, you know, figuring out this painting journey. All right. So there we go. We have a tiny bit here at the bottom of in the navy, and we've laid out some pure ocean. All right. Majority of this piece is probably going to be these lighter colors, the sea glass and the burlap. Um, because I don't want it to be super overwhelming with color, I want it to be more like a deep dark ocean that comes up into sand, because I'm fancy like that. So I'm going to take my sea glass out of this little container, and I'm going to pour it in a cup, and then that way. I can continue my painting. So know that when I have my red solo cup, this is not anything fun. This is just sea glass. <laughs> All right, I'm getting another brush, which is my flat medium. I'm going to dampen my brush. By dampening my brush, I am able to kind of drag my paint a little bit further. It's not as damp on the first coat as the second. The second coat is more when you're gonna dampen your brush and pull your colors together. So I've got sea glass in my little cup down here and we're just gonna put it down. This color is divine. It's one of my favorite colors to paint with, um, which is why it's in that little travel container because I've used it so often that my jar was getting junky. I needed to divide it up and put it in a safer container so that I wouldn't lose any paint because that stuff is like gold. You don't wanna lose your paint. You wanna keep it tightly sealed. All right, so I'm just kind of coming in here. And laying down this gorgeous, gorgeous sea glass. All right, so I'm putting my, putting my goggles on. I want to see your comments. What are you thinking with this? Why do I, oh, I missed the question. Sorry, my ADD is catching up with me. Why do I spray the brush? I spray the brush because it makes my paint go on that little bit smoother. And on my second round, when I do my second coat of paint, my brush is always going to be sprayed and dampened because it's going to minimize your brush strokes. It's gonna allow your paint to go a tiny bit further, as well as just keep a really smooth, pretty finish. It's just a, a good habit to get into, having a nice, damp brush. It's just one of those things that you're gonna find as a painter, especially when you blend a lot of colors like me. Um, works well. It just helps you pull all your colors together. So try it. You'll like it. Trust me. This spray misting bottle is actually a Dixie Bell paint product as well. Um, all the products I'm using today are available obviously through the Dixie Bell paint company web page. Um, and you can use that little link that's above my head to find your local realtor, <laughs> realtor, your local, <laughs> your local stockist or shop or whoever's selling Dixie Bell in your area, they will let you know where you can find it or you can purchase through that link as well. All right, so I got distracted. I wanted to ask you, what are you guys thinking color-wise for the hardware? What are we thinking now that we're seeing this color plan kind of come together? Are you thinking warm gold and gold digger? Or are you thinking cooler tones and silver bullet? I'm taking votes, so let me know. Get on there, put your vote in. Not blending my colors together yet, just laying down the initial color pattern. And I won't be painting this top piece today because then that would require me changing the camera angle and moving everything around. And I don't want to make you seasick. Yeah, it's kind of funny since we're painting the beach theme. <laughs> I don't want to make you seasick with movement. All right, so I'm going to come in a little bit more. Okay. So in the navy, 
Peacock, Sea Glass. I see one vote for Silver Bullet. I see one vote for Gold. I see another Gold. You guys better get it together. Gotta give me a definite answer here. I need to know these things. Let's see. How to order the transfers that you've seen. All right, so Dixie Bell is on here and they can answer some questions. Dixie Bell does um, carry some of the transfers, but you can always um, check your local Etsy as well if you find one that you're looking for, if you can't find one that you're looking for. Uh, they are redesigned by Prima Transfers and there are some available on the Dixie Bell paint page. All right, so now you can see burlap. There's my sand, all right? Gorgeous, gorgeous sand. Burlap is a really nice neutral color. Again, a new paintbrush, one for each color. Remember, we're keeping this neutral right now and not mixing the colors. So we're not contaminating our brushes yet. We will. Well, we're going to mix it all up. Let's see. Wow, lots of silvers, huh? You guys, I don't, you know what? Let me tell you a little secret. This isn't even opened. I am not a silver girl. You're going to push me out of my comfort zone and make me pick silver. When I always go with the gold, you know, you know I love some gold. I mean, I'm obsessed with the gold building wax, but I'm seeing silver. I can see that. It'll kind of be shimmery, like, like a little bit of a mermaid, maybe. Very cool. Or, you know, I could go in the middle and do the steel magnolia, which is in between gold and silver. And I'll fool you all. You never know. See those two colors? See how close they are? They're close, but this is warm, and silver bullet is very, very cool. So, we'll get there. We'll paint this hard work. We'll figure it out. So now I've got my dampened brush again, medium flat. And I'm just coming in and putting the color down. So can you see my ocean happening here? Can you see my burlap and my sea glass and my gorgeous peacock? It's all starting to happen. I'm not mixing my colors yet. I'm not blending. I'm just making sure I'm getting around my edges. really hard to paint with hardware in. It's just not my jam. It's not what I usually do. Um, but we will do it today. Come up to the top here. This color combo. Are you feeling the beach? Are you feeling this gorgeous blend happen? Laying down my base. Turn this around a little bit. Nothing has fallen over yet. We're still safe. <laughs> it's, you know what, you guys, if you know me and you've been watching my videos for a while, you all know that I'm a, I'm a giant klutz. Like, if there is somewhere to be hurt, or fall up a set of stairs or sit in some paint, it's gonna be me. It's gonna be me that does it out of all the girls. <laughs> it's just what happens to me. I've learned to live with it. Okay, so here's a little tip I wanna show you. See the detail in these little flourishes at the top? When you're pouncing your, your paint on here and you're getting your first layer in, it's kinda of hard to get it into those areas. It's kind of hard to get it in there and keep it smooth looking. So my trick for you is to wet your brush a little bit more than you normally would, kind of like an excessive wet. And what's going to happen is that water is just going to thin the paint a little bit and it's going to let you get into these edges. Super duper easy. See how easy that was? So you're pouncing the paint in those edges. You're making sure that your paint is in all of the little corners and little areas. Just by doing this little extra wetting, you're just getting it in there that little bit easier. I do that on all of my detail, on all of my pieces. It's just a way to make sure that you're not gonna see any wood underneath and you're getting it into all the nooks and crannies and crevices. So just keep a damper brush, more damp than normal when you're working on those sections and you'll find that it, it really kind of helps your paint get into those areas a lot easier. All right. Jewelry armoire is not real wood. It's not. It's, it's a manufactured wood for sure. But guess what? With a good cleaning and making sure that you've prepped your product properly, you're ready for paint. 
I'm going to do two coats of paint on this piece and this will be sealed with a satin sealer ensuring that my paint is going to stay where I put it. All right. Okay, so now we have our base down for this project. Are you loving it? What do you think? It's pretty cute, right? Let's see. Oh, circular motions maybe, what for this little edge? I find just pouncing it right in with the brush that's dampened really helps you get it into these little nooks and crannies very easily. And again, this is just my first coat. We haven't blended yet um, and we, we haven't pulled it together. I didn't take the handles off, Susan, because they don't come off. These are velvet lined drawers, um, which means that when they installed the hardware, the velvet went directly onto the drawers. I can't take them off, which stinks for me. You guys know that I'm not one to paint hardware often, um, so I need to work with what you got. Right? Work with what you got. So now you see my little beachy theme. In the navy, peacock, sea glass, and burlap. This tells me I see sand, surf, and ocean. I just, I mean, this is what makes my heart happy. You will find me at the beach any day of the week if you can. I love it there. I love it. Okay, so let's move in to our second coat. Don't be discouraged when you're doing an ombre blend and you have a lot of edges and drawers. You just need to work a little bit more focused, a little bit harder on those areas. It will blend, it will come together. Will it be perfect? Probably not, but guess what? This is art and nobody said it has to be perfect, okay? Art is what you make it and what you are happy with, all right? And I'm gonna be gilding the heck out of this. We're gonna use all our gilding waxes. Um, so for sure, I put on the floor my turquoise, which is this gorgeous blue. And I know that they're sold out right now on the Dixie Belle paint page, but hold tight, hold tight, because they will be back in stock in June and you will be able to get all of your gilding waxes again, okay? So see that gorgeous blue? We're gonna shimmer and shine it all up. It's gonna be all good things. So this is how I do my second coats. Do you remember I told you that In the Navy is very pigmented and very, very rich. You do not have to, with In the Navy, do a lot of a second coat. It just covers really well, really evenly, and it just is, the pigment is so rich, you don't need a lot of paint within the navy. My find my in the navy lasts longer than a lot of other colors, just because that pigment is so rich and so delicious. Plus it looks super good. In the navy is definitely in my top 10 color list for painting because it's it's easy. It's easy to paint when a paint is so rich and covers so easily. So I'm just gonna touch up my In the Navy, making sure all of my wood is covered. On my second coat of any ombre blend, what I tend to do is lay down the initial color fully for both colors, then we're gonna pull it together, okay? Because you're going to see me contaminate these brushes pretty fast. I am a messy painter, but that means it's fun. Messy is fun. <laughs> so here we go. I have now done my second coat of In the Navy. I'm going to come in with my Pure Ocean and do the same thing. I'm just making sure, I'm not blending yet, I'm not touching these colors together. I'm just making sure that all my wood is covered. Do you remember on the first coat, I said I go helter-skelter, I don't stay neat, I don't stay tidy. My second coat is when I make sure my brush is a little damp. I make sure that my strokes are even and that we're going in one direction for a smoother finish, okay? Because I need to cover all of this wood. And I'm gonna cover this entire section of Pure Ocean before I pull these two colors together. You follow? You got me? All right, let's keep going. So I'm just getting in here, covering up this wood. And yes, I'm painting with the drawers in. Don't worry, I'll go back in later on and make sure I've covered all of my edges. So I'm just making sure, not blending, not blending yet. start to pull a little bit if it starts to drag hit it again with your spray misting bottle 
This is just ensuring that your paint is a smoother application. If your paint just a tiny bit further, when you have that, that dampened brush, your paint just goes a tiny bit further. All right, almost there. We're going to talk about blending. Feel it drag and hit it again. There we go. So at this point in the process, I've laid down one of each of my original colors. I've come in with my In the Navy for a second coat, okay? I've made sure my wood is covered completely and my second coat is even. I've done that by spraying my misting bottle with my brush, keeping them both damp and pulling that color and making sure it's nice and even and smooth. You can see a big difference on your second coat when you keep that spray misting bottle handy. Okay, so did I just wipe blue paint on my face? Maybe. This is how I do my blend. I have two colors that are close in the color family. These two are going to be blending easier than this and this because this is a bigger contrast. I'm going to go back to my In the Navy brush. All right, I have a paper towel on the floor. I'm gonna take off some of the excess paint by just rubbing my brush on the paper towel. I'm going to mist my bottle with my brush here and I'm going to start to blend my colors together. I'm going to use short, feathery strokes. I'm going to go up and down, left and right. I'm going to play with this paint until it does what I want it to do. Ready? And you're going to see how easy this is because these two colors are very close, very close on the color wheel. All right, so I like a kind of curved motion. I like my edges to come up a little bit higher than my base. The navy brush, I'm not sticking a bunch of this pure ocean, which is brighter, on the bottom. I'm just moving my paint around and getting those two colors nice and blendy. All right, I'm going to go into my pure ocean brush now. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to blot it off on the paper towel. You don't want a ton of paint on your brush, okay? You don't need a ton of paint on your brush. Actually, a lot of girls will, will take the majority of the paint off entirely with a cloth. This brush is just kind of still damp, but not saturated with paint. I don't need to go and blend this all the way down. All I need to do is kind of blend this top little piece where my In the Navy is touching. What do you think? How easy was that? Do you see how easy that was? Two colors, close in the same color family, and they just blend together so nicely. All right, Judith, see a question. Does In the Navy and Antebellum go well together? I most definitely think so, and I have my Antebellum sitting on the floor right here because I thought about using it today. But this is a short piece, which tells me I can't put too many ombre blends because you're not gonna see a really pretty definition. When a piece is, is tiny like this, four is probably the max that you would see me do. Um, three is probably even better because you're just going to see a nice gradual kind of display of ombre, but definitely this is one of my most favorite colors. If I'm going to tell you out of all the colors in Dixie Bell's Paint Rage what to buy, I'm going to make you buy all the waxes because I'm obsessed with shine and gold. I'm going to make you buy Moonshine Metallics and Gold Digger because it is my favorite color and I put it on everything. And I like these deep moody blues, antebellum blue in the navy and i still love some aubergine so those are my faves top three all right give them a try and then throw in the metallics moonshine metallics grab a gilling wax when you actually do get a chance when they get them back in stock and you can purchase one of these little gilding waxes these are going to last you forever forever they last a very long time so don't be afraid of trying new things and color and shine it's really good and delicious all right, yeah, add it to your order. I wanna see, Judith, what you paint when you're done. Send me a pic, I wanna see. Okay, so now that you've seen me pull together these two colors, In the Navy and Pure Ocean, we're gonna work on the front. And I'm not gonna lie, it's gonna be a little harder because there's detail going on. 
but you can still do it. Remember, keep your brush dampened. I'm not spraying this. If I sprayed this, the color is going to run down and that's going to be sad and annoying because I don't want to lose all the hard work that I just did. So short feathery strokes, work in kind of tiny sections. Think about how this drawer would blend. I'm going to pull it up probably a little higher on the sides like this because that's what I like to do. See, I just touched it down here with a tiny bit. Easy fix. Easy, easy, easy fix. All you need to do is take a little bit tiny of your in the navy on your brush. Touch it. It's already gone. I feel like blending is one of those things that people get very anxious about. And, and you shouldn't because blending is actually fun to do and the more you do it the faster you're going to get and you're going to be like blending everything if you go to my facebook page which is linked above my head i, I have a very hard time <laughs> not ombre everything because once you get the hang of it it's so much fun and it just adds so much more definition to a piece i'm a big big fan of color big fan of color all right, so now I'm just taking my Pure Ocean brush and I'm bringing it back down a little bit. I'm gonna kind of blend these little edges here together. Secret about gilding wax. Because I'm going to be putting gilding wax pretty much on this entire piece, I'm able to hide any boo-boos that I don't like. Gilding wax is one of those things that if you come in here on the edge and you add some shine and your ombre isn't exactly perfect, nobody's going to see it because they're going to see that gorgeous shine and they're just going to see glimmery, shiny, delicious gilding wax and they're not going to see if your ombre is perfect or not. It's really cute. So let's see, what sealant or wax will we use when this is all finished? I plan on sealing this entire piece in my clear coat. And I'm going to be using satin finish, I believe. I normally wax a lot of my pieces, um, but because I feel like this piece has nice, deep, dark colors, I love it when I can put a clear coat on top of um, what I'm doing and see those colors deepen and get super gorgeous. Because a color like in the navy looks so good with the clear coat it just does it just looks richer and deeper you can wax you can clear coat um, all of these paints are going to cure within 30 days you don't even really need to top coat I personally like to clear coat okay I have to stop talking for one quick minute because if I don't stop talking I can't I can't talk and concentrate it's super super hard one second of me just keeping my mouth closed and getting this blend perfect, and then we're good to go. There's just a tiny little, little spot that needed some extra TLC. Because y'all know I talk a lot. It's hard to keep me quiet. So, now that I look at this, I'm happy with this blend. I'm loving this little oceany vibe that's going on right here. The blends are easy. It comes a little higher on the edges that I like. We have one more section over here. And guess what? This has not fallen over on me yet. So yay. <laughs> yay for that. I might lose my own bet. I put my money on that it was going to fall over. So I'm going to go back to me in the Navy and I'm going to move this pure ocean down a little bit. Short feathery strokes. For them to kind of come together. And if you feel like it's not enough in the navy on the bottom, dip your brush back in there. Go back to your in the navy. And kind of add some more on the bottom. There's no rules in painting. This is all about what you like to do. So there you go. That is good for my in the navy. Again, blot off my brush. Hit it with my spray misting bottle and now I'm just making sure that that line is pretty. I don't need to drag this brush up here, there's no, there's no reason to. Right now I'm just working on these two color blends and I'm already happy with that. What did that take me? 
like 2.5 minutes of blending. It's easy when they're close together on the same color wheel. All right, let's see. Uh, Dixie Bell is answering a question for me about gator hide. Gator hide is the toughest. It is the toughest repellent for your furniture. You are going to be able to, um, you know, have a high use object with gator hide be protected very well. And again, sorry if I missed your question. I'll come back in after and answer for you. Okay, so now, let's see. And you know what I see when I'm kind of leaning down? Tiny little piece that I missed. I'm done in the navy. Fixed it, good to go. So now I'm gonna put this over here and I'm actually gonna spray my in the navy with my water because I'm not washing my brush yet. All right, two coats are here of pure ocean, two coats are here on the, in the navy. I'm going to move up into my sea glass and I'm going to apply my second coat to the sea glass, okay? So remember, second coat means more even, making sure that your brush is dampened if you feel it dragging. I just ordered a second one of these because this is like my, this is like my, my right hand. I need to keep my spray misting bottle with me at all times. If I didn't have the spray misting bottle, I would not be able to achieve the looks um, that I like. So I just ordered another one as insurance. So maybe order two spray misting bottles just to be safe, just to make sure. So now, before I mix my colors, remember, because I don't want to contaminate my brush and contaminate my colors, I'm going to lay down my second coat of sea glass. Keeping it wet because this paint is pretty dry already. Dixie Bell paint dries fairly quickly. it down where it's going to live before I contaminate it all up with all the colors. You see one tiny little spot in here. Perfect. So now how are we liking this blend? It's changing a little bit, right? It's not looking exactly the same as it did before. The beach is happening. The beach is starting to happen. All right. Almost there, and we're going to mix these two colors together. Left, right, up and down, whatever your hand makes you the most comfortable, but just know that by keeping your brush damp, it's going to make your job a little bit easier, and it's going to make this blend easier. Okay, so when we did the blend on the darker colors, I started with the darker up. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna take my Pure Ocean brush, and I see a tiny little bit right there, I'm just gonna fix. So I'm gonna take my Pure Ocean brush, I'm gonna blot it off, make sure it's still damp, but not sopping wet. I don't want an excess amount of paint on my brush. I'm gonna to start to pull these two colors together. Remember, feathery strokes are best. Don't be heavy handed, be light. Keeping your brush damp, I always like to bring that darker color up a tiny bit. I don't want a blend to be perfectly straight across. It's just my own thing. I like to kind of darken up the edges a little bit more and bring it down in a curve. A little bit, I'm gonna spray it again. Little thing right here. So I use my Pure Ocean brush, right? Do I like this line? No. All I'm going to do is take off that sea glass from my brush, dip back into my Pure Ocean, and clean up that edge. Just a tiny bit. There you go. That's better. The blend was not making me happy. So I added the original pigment before I pulled it up. So let's move into my sea glass brush. I hope you're going to try ombre. Have you tried ombre blending? I feel like it's been around long enough now that everybody has tried it. And if you haven't, what are you waiting for? Grab a couple colors and have some fun. Do you like it? That's, just, that's, that's it. That's all I'm going to do for these three right now. We'll work on that part in a quick hot minute. But for now, this is done. I don't want to overwork it. I don't want to stress out if it's not perfect because I'm gonna be adding gilding wax in the edges, and this blend right here looks 
pretty darn good. I'm super happy with that. It's looking delicious and very oceany. All right, let's see. I'm seeing if I can see any questions I'm missing. I often do a lot of talking um, because I want you to learn as much as you can in this time period. I don't, I don't want to leave you hanging. I want you to kind of see all of this blended. And then I'll probably even finish this up on my own Facebook page. So I'm going to go back over to my Pure Ocean, sorry, Peacock, my Peacock brush. And I'm going to just start to pull these colors a little bit together. They're definitely drier. It's definitely going to take a little bit more moving stuff around. But we're going to make it happen. this hardware again painting this hardware because it doesn't come off and why don't I actually well I have you sitting here bring you in a tiny bit closer because now you don't have to see the bottom of this piece we'll bring you up close and personal for some blending how's that a little bit better a little closer again working with my peacock brush just starting the journey of pulling these two colors together. And I'm gonna kind of do up here what I did down here, which is bring the darker in on the edges. My brush dragging, so that means I need to re-dampen a little bit. Who's been counting? How many golds are we at and how many silvers are we at? <laughs> Have we decided what color this hardware is gonna be at? I'm not gonna lie, I, I don't know if I wanna do silver, but I might have to, right? Because if that's what you all are telling me, I told you, I'm giving you, I'm giving you guys the decision. You're taking it away. I'm just touching up the little edges down here with some fresh paint where it wasn't covered. Okay, so now that I've gone in with my blending, I'm gonna go up into my sea glass brush. I'm gonna again, remove the excess amount of paint with a paper towel, and I'm gonna keep it damp. I'm using that gilling wax, so if it's not perfect, I don't care, because nobody will see it anyways. It's gonna be shiny. Sorry, I have to turn it a tiny bit so I can still see. Oops. Back and forth with the two brushes. Remember I told you, this is gonna be a harder blend than in the navy and peacock because there is a lot more definition between these two colors. They're not exactly the same. Working with ombre blends, it's always going to be easier when you're very close in color combinations. I feel my brush dragging, spray it again. I'm good with that. This much I can live with. Remember, I'm going to be opening up these doors and doing the inside panels. Um, off camera because I don't want to suck up all your time making you learn the same thing all over the whole place. Give me a hot second. I have to fix it. Go focus. <laughs> That's not good. Sometimes my artistic eye is a, a problem because it sucks me in and I'll get entirely distracted by one little detail like that and I won't be able to function. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my Pure Ocean. I keep saying Pure Ocean, I apologize. My Peacock, and I'm going to make sure my brush is dampened. I'm gonna try and pull these colors together. I can definitely feel this is a lot more dry than it was before. I'm actually gonna add a tiny little bit back onto my brush. I like it to kind of come off the edges a tiny bit more. And you know, you don't have to be afraid of not having your sides exactly the same as your front. Because of the angle of this piece, you're not really gonna see it. You're not gonna see if it's perfectly matched up. I don't mind, and that's another trick for why I like to drag my darker colors up a little bit higher. 
I don't mind if it's not the same all the way around. I don't think anybody would come in here and analyze my ombre blend that much. I would hope not anyways. And if they did, well then, so be it. Judge, judge me. It's just paint. If you don't like it, you can always paint over top of it. Or you can scroll on by. <laughs> Sorry, you're gonna hear my puppy dogs bark. Somebody's delivering something. Okay, so what do we think of this beautiful ombre blend? Do you know what's being delivered right now? I'm gonna give you a hot little tip, a hot little secret. Did you guys know that the Dixieville brand ambassadors are doing another dual live together? I don't know if you caught us a couple weeks ago when we did that amazingly funny mystery challenge with the paint. <laughs> it was a lot of fun and a lot of crazy and uh, a lot of paint that we weren't used to painting with. We picked each a color that we did not love in our favorite kind of span of paints and we picked a color that we absolutely loved and we did a paint challenge and we all loved it so much you know the nine of us brand ambassadors that we are going to do another and it's going to be a, uh, a surprise so not giving away all the details but y'all i just ordered a wig and it just showed up so stay tuned for our crazy painting challenge number two coming <laughs> at the end of the month and i promise you a lot of giggles and a lot of laughs because it is a lot of fun. Okay, so because my burlap has dried, back on task, let's get back to work. Because my burlap has dried, I needed to be wet to blend these two colors together. So I just added a tiny bit more burlap to my brush, okay? The sea glass is still damp from when I did my coat, but my burlap is, is dry. So I'm just gonna go back in here and make sure that I've covered all of my wood, making sure it's nice and even, Steven, before I contaminate this whole entire brush with more colors. Remember, pouncing it in the details, having it a little bit more damp helps. Did you guys watch that fun mystery challenge with all of us brand ambassadors a couple weeks ago? It was, uh, it was a lot of fun. We had a good time. So there will be another coming soon. I think it's next week. I can't remember. I've lost track of all of my days and all of my time. It's all mushed together. Okay, so we're just going in with this burlap, making sure that all of my wood is covered for my ombre blood, and then you all will be free to go. <laughs> and you can join me in another day when I finish it up on my own paint page. Because uh, this is a really cute little number, and I don't know if I can wait till next week to paint the rest of it. I might have to just get it all done because it's super, super cute. And when it's cute like this and little, it makes me want to paint it all as fast as possible. All right, so I'm coming in with the burlap. I'm very dampening my brush, just making sure. I'm ready to do my ombre blending. Okay, so there you go. Burlap is on all the way across. I'm not gonna do the top right now, we'll do that off camera. But I'm going to actually go backwards this time. I don't think I'm going to bring my sea glass up. I'm gonna bring my burlap down. So I'm gonna pull off the excess amount of paint with my paper towel. I told you I'm a messy painter, look at this. Look, crazy. I'm gonna spray my paint brush. It's not crazy wet, it's just damp, okay? And I'm gonna do the same blending. We're still gonna pull this down. The burlap is my sand inspo on this piece. I like the kind of curved edge. Put on here. Gotta get that out. All right. Did you know that burlap and sea glass makes such a pretty combo? So good together. So good together. All right, I'm happy with that. Let's go over here. I'm actually gonna to touch a tiny bit of sea glass onto this area, just because I want it to be wet where my colors are coming together and blending together. And I'm gonna stick with my burlap brush and I'm going to pull them together.
for uh, coming down a bit into the sea glass. It looks pretty. It looks like a pretty combo. Is it looking like the beach? Is my vision happening? I think so. Now you can see again how much of an easier blend these two colors are versus the sea glass and the peacock. Just because they're just that lighter tone, it's just easier. glass because I came down a little too far with my burlap and I need to just tidy up those edges. And that line, I want it to kind of disappear. What do you think? Pretty blend? Looks good? One more side and then we're almost finished. Okay, again, dampening my brush. Spraying it, bringing that burlap down into the sea glass, kind of following that same curved pattern. It better when edges come up like this. I don't like a blend that's too precise. I want, I always want my things to look a little bit messier. I don't want them to look too perfect because there's no perfect in painting. So what do you think? At this point, we have today, I'm gonna push you back so you can get the whole big picture again. Started with in the navy, blended into peacock. And speaking of in the navy, I see a tiny drop that fell down there. Gone, already fixed it. So in the navy, into peacock, into sea glass, into burlap. We've done this all the way around the piece. Yes, I painted the hardware, I know, because it doesn't come off. So we are working with what we have. How are we liking this? Do you like it? Looks good, right? At the end of the day, yes, I would have loved to take the hardware off, but it's not coming off. It's velvet lined and I don't want to wreck the inside. So I am going to be using my Moonshine Metallics in one of these three colors. Remember, we have Gold Digger, we have Steel Magnolia, and we have silver bullet. Where are we at with our boats? Who's counting? What am I painting it? <laughs> what, what, what color am I painting my hardware, y'all? Because I told you, you'd pick. I'm going to go through and count and take a tally and see who said what. These are my three metallic colors to choose from for the hardware. You know I'm going to pick gold if it was up to me, but y'all were saying a lot of silver, a lot of silver bullet. Yes, the top will be painted. It's going to be painted in pure burlap, the same as this piece right here, okay? Um, but now you can kind of see my beachy vision. How beachy is that? Sand, surf, ocean. Not bad, huh? You did this with, um, what? Four colors, four colors. Not hard, and we did it pretty fast. If I can do it, you can do it too. It's just paint. I see a lot of golds. I really, I'm, I'm really not gonna lie, I'm leaning to Steel Magnolia. I'm really leaning towards this color. Only because it's not gold and it's not silver. It's a beautiful, beautiful in-between color. Have you seen Steel Magnolia yet? Let me open it up and show you. Steel Magnolia is a warm champagne. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous metallic. This is the one in the middle. So remember, this is going to be waxed in gilding wax. I've got a couple on the floor. I've got my warm gold, of course. I have my beautiful turquoise, which will go around the edge, okay? Um, and I do know that you're unable to purchase these right now because they've been out of stock for a little while, but I do know they are coming back. Hold your pennies until June when they restock and then get them when they're hot because everybody is wanting <laughs> the gilding wax, me included. I miss it. Um, so there you go, four colors, beach theme, ombre blending on a jewelry armoire. It's not done. If you like, you want to come over onto uh, my own Facebook page. If you like, you can come over and watch me. Maybe we'll paint a little bit more. Maybe I'll aim the camera angle up and we will get started on the top piece. By then, maybe the base will be dry enough to add some wax and I'll show you how I do that, which is usually with a small crafting brush. Um, I missed a question about Moonshine Metallics. If you wanted it more gray than beigey, I tell you to mix all of your colors. 
There's no rules in painting. If you want to add a little bit of moonshine metallics um, to something, go for it. Experiment. That, that's what this is about. If you go to the Dixie Bell paint page um, and you look at ordering a paint color, it's going to give you some paint recipes that you can mix and then you can um, make your own individual paint colors. You know, make it, make it your own. I have Caribbean on the floor right here. Look. Oh, so good, right? I love, I love some metallics. I'm like a bird drawn to shiny things. <laughs> so, uh, if you want to follow me on Facebook, please do. I would love to have you join me. My link is above my head. I am the top drawer RBA. My name is Melissa, and I am Dixie Bell's newest brand ambassador. You can um, see me painting live here on the Dixie Bell paint page every Wednesday at 3. And if you get a chance to hop on over to my Instagram page, I paint things live on Instagram every day. I am live on Instagram every single day, walking you through my entire uh, schedule of everything that I paint. And it's a lot. <laughs> so come on over, because you're going to get a lot more interaction over there. And if by chance you came over from my Instagram page today to watch me paint, thank you for coming over to Facebook and hanging out with me. All right? I am glad that you all had fun. I saw lots of hearts. I saw lots of thumbs up. This is entirely my style too. Maybe we'll just paint everything in my house beach themed because I'm, I'm scared that we're not going to get to the beach this summer. So I will make my own beach. Take care, everybody. I hope you learned something today. Again, if I missed your question, I'll come back in and answer in the comments below. Thank you for joining me and thank you for watching. Thank you very much, Dixie Bell. I'll see you next Wednesday at 3 p.m.